All right, it's getting colder and colder. And of course, as it gets colder and colder, the temperatures drop in here. This is actually heated. And uh, because it's heated, I'm losing a lot of water through evaporation. So what I'm doing is I have this filled up with tap water, which sits there for a couple of days. And then I have a pump that fills this thing back up. This thing was really low this morning. Um, and the temperature in here is pretty nice. Um, it's 71 degrees. Um, over here, it's also 71. So, I mean, uh, with my uh, heaters, I have a 500 watt here, a 500 watt, and a 200 watt. I also have a swirl filter over here that has a 500 watt in it, and this also has a 500 watt. So, I mean, it's going to stay pretty nice. It is right now 60 degrees out here, and um, the temperature of this water should be about uh, the temperature of this water is 60 as it's pumped into here it's going to have to heat up as it's being pumped back into here it's going to cool everything off which is not good because we really want to keep everything at least 70 degrees uh, over the course of this winter so how i'm going to keep it nice and warm throughout the winter time well it's time to put on my greenhouse structure and uh, definitely make sure that everything is insulated, especially uh, the, the fish tank and the swirl tank, which is probably going to have to stay outside of the greenhouse because I just don't have room. And that's what we're going to be putting on top. Unfortunately, we had some uh, damage to it, so I have to tape it all up. And the only thing I can do to make it work is to put some uh, visqueen underneath of it. And we'll see if this works. Let's check it out. So the reason why I'm putting some visqueen on over the actual structure itself is because I want some double insulation this winter. This last winter, it got really cold in there, so I don't know if it's because of the top is like a single layer or not. So doing double layers, well, hopefully the heat will stay in there. And the only heat that I have right now are the submersible heaters that I told you about. I suppose if it gets really cold, I could put one of those small space heaters in there, but I'm not sure yet. And then of course the last thing that I did is I took a couple of the sunshades that I had in the uh, garage and I wrapped it around the swirl filter. So this is the entire thing. It's working great. Too bad that I have a lot of tears because I got to duct tape the heck out of it. I guess next year I will uh, get a new one. But that's how I'm cold proofing the uh, aquaponic system for this winter. And even though it's cold as heck today because I cold, look at that. Almost 80 degrees. Um, pretty awesome. And thank you for watching my video today. If you know any way to help cold proof an aquaponic system, please let me know. Come on over by my YouTube channel and subscribe if you have not done so already. And come on over to my personal Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Sean Simons. Let me know if you have an aquaponic system and you've cold proofed it for the winter. 